Good morning and welcome to Virtual School Bahamas, powered by the Ministry of Education. Please be reminded that lessons are recorded and can be viewed on our website. In addition, all questions must be placed in the Q&A chat. All questions must be of an educational content. Moreover, resources can be retrieved from the website, inclusive of past papers and worksheets. As usual, sit back, relax, and learn. In previous lessons, we looked at adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions. Today, we will be looking at dividing fractions. I want you to exercise or implement prior knowledge in working with me today. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the steps involved in dividing fractions, also simplify these fractions. I just want to recap from previous lesson, <clears throat> multiplying fractions. I'm gonna put up a question and I want you to attempt with prior knowledge. If you can see the screen, I have up the fractions two third times two fourths. So it's two third of two fourths. Remember the rules for multiplying fractions. Okay, so we have, and remember, you're gonna multiply your tops together and you're gonna multiply your bottoms together. So two times two is four and three times four is 12. Secondly, we have two and one fifth multiplied by two and one third. Again, remember the rules for multiplying fractions. Good. Remember that when you are multiplying fractions where you have a whole number attached it's called a mixed fraction what you want to do with your mixed fraction in the first case is you want to multiply your whole number by your denominator okay so you want to multiply the whole number or the whole numbers rather by the denominator and add the numerator in this case we have two and one fifth. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply two times five, giving us 10 and one being 11 over. And again, you want to keep your number, your, sorry, your denominator. You want to take over the denominator. The next, the second part of the fraction, two and one third. Again, you want to multiply the whole number by the denominator and add the numerator. In this case, you have two times three is six, and one is seven over, good job. You want to keep the denominator. In this case, it's three. So I want you to look at the answers again, okay? Moving right along, what does three divided by one half actually mean? Does anybody know? It means how many halves do we need to make three holes? How many halves do we need to make three holes? 
two halves equal one whole. Four halves equal two holes. Six halves equals three holes. So three divided by one half equals six. What does five divided by one half actually mean? It means how many halves do we need to make five holes? Again, two halves equal one hole. Four halves equal two holes. Six halves equals three holes. Eight halves equals four holes. And 10 halves equal five holes. So five divided by one half equals 10. What do you notice here? I'm gonna give you one minute to look at it and tell me if you see a trend. Okay, dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. Good job. So 12 divided by one half equals 24. And 55 divided by one half equals? Yes, 100. And 10. I want to show you a short clip before we get into the meat of our lesson today. So sit back and pay close attention to what is being said. Hi, and welcome to Math Antics. This video is all about dividing fractions. But in order to understand how dividing fractions works, we first need to learn about something called reciprocals. A reciprocal is just a fancy math term for what you get when you switch the top and bottom numbers of a fraction. For example, if you have the fraction 1 over 2 and then switch the top and bottom numbers, you'll end up with 2 over 1. 2 over 1 is the reciprocal of 1 over 2. And 1 over 2 is the reciprocal of 2 over 1. And an interesting thing about reciprocals is multiplying a fraction by its own reciprocal will always give you one. That's because you'll have the same multiplication problem on the top and bottom, so you'll end up with a whole fraction, which is always one. Okay, that's nice, but what do reciprocals have to do with dividing fractions? Well, reciprocals let us do a really cool trick that makes dividing fractions easy. Whenever you have to divide something by a fraction, you can just multiply it by the reciprocal of that fraction instead, and you'll get the correct answer. And that's great news because multiplying fractions is so simple. This trick of multiplying by the reciprocal works because fractions are really just many division problems. So when you multiply something by 1 over 2, it's the same as dividing by 2 since 2 is below the fraction's division line. And dividing by 2 is the same as dividing by 2 over 1 because you can turn any number into a fraction by just writing a 1 as the bottom number, right? But look, reciprocals. That's why multiplying by 1 over 2 is the same as dividing by 2 over 1. And it's true the other way around, too. So really, it's kind of like you never have to divide fractions. You can just rewrite your division problems so that you're multiplying by the reciprocal instead. Then when you multiply, you'll get the answer for the original division problem. As always, let's see a couple examples of how this works so you'll really understand. Let's try this problem. 3 over 4 divided by 2 over 7. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is rewrite our problem. Instead of dividing by 2 over 7, we can multiply by the reciprocal instead. The reciprocal of 2 over 7 is 7 over 2. So our problem becomes 3 over 4 times 7 over 2. 
Oh, I should mention a mistake that a lot of students make when they first learn to divide fractions. Sometimes students take the reciprocal of the first fraction, the one that's being divided, or even the reciprocal of both fractions. But you only want to take the reciprocal of the second fraction, the one you're dividing by. Okay, now that our problem has been changed to multiplication, it's easy. Just multiply the tops, 3 times 7 equals 21, and multiply the bottoms, 4 times 2, and we have the answer to our fraction division problem. So 3 over 4 divided by 2 over 7 is 21 over 8. So that's pretty easy, but let's try one more example. Let's try 15 over 16 divided by 9 over 22. Again, the first thing we want to do is rewrite our problem. We'll change the divided by 9 over 22 into times 22 over 9. Now all we have to do is multiply. But since these numbers are kind of big, I'm going to use my calculator to help. Let's see here. So we have... all right. On the top, we have 15 times 22 equals 330. And on the bottom, we have 16 times 9 equals 144. So the answer to our division problem is 330 over 144. Of course, that could be simplified for your final answer on a test, but we cover simplifying fractions in another video. Alright, that's how you divide fractions. You just multiply by the reciprocal and you have your answer. But there's one more thing I want to show you. You already know that the line between the top and bottom number of a fraction is just another form of the division symbol. Well, that means you'll sometimes see fraction division problems written like this. This shows the top fraction, 2 over 3, being divided by the bottom fraction, 4 over 5. It's really just that we have a fraction made up from other fractions. The top number is a fraction, and the bottom number is a fraction. It just looks a little confusing because we have all these fraction lines here. But we can make it look a lot better. Let's rewrite this as a multiplication problem by taking the reciprocal of the bottom number, the fraction that we're dividing by, and multiplying it by the fraction on top. There! That looks easier to do, and it's really the same problem. We just need to multiply to get the answer. So 2 times 5 equals 10, and 3 times 4 equals 12. Okay, so there you have it. What sounded really hard turns out to be as easy as flipping fractions upside down. If you can multiply fractions, then you can divide fractions too. Don't forget to practice what you've learned by doing the exercises for this section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, now I want you to retain the information that you just saw in the clip so that we can apply it to our lesson today. Okay, we can now look at one or two situations whereby we have to divide fractions. In the first case, we have two thirds divided by one half. I'm going to give you a minute to work on that for me. Okay, if you remember from the clip that you just saw, the rules are you want to leave, change, and flip. In other words, what you want to do is you want to find the reciprocal. Okay, so when dividing fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And what is the reciprocal? Remember, the reciprocal, it's just switching places between the denominator, sorry, and the numerator. So the denominator and the numerators sip, switch places when you're finding the reciprocal. So you want to leave the first part of the fraction. In this case, it's two thirds. So two thirds, okay, you're gonna leave the two thirds. The next thing you want to do is you want to change the sign. Good job. Here we have division. Remember what the clip said, the sign is changed to? Correct. The sign is changed to multiplication. What do we do with the second part of our fraction? Yes, we want to find the reciprocal. And remember, the reciprocal is simply the denominator and the numerator's switching place. In other words, 
you want to put two over one in this case. So again, you want to leave, change, flip. I want you to use prior knowledge here. Remember when we multiplied fractions? What did we do? Good job. You want to multiply the numerators or the tops, and you want to multiply the denominators, the bottom. Okay, so again, you want to multiply the tops, and then you want to multiply the bottoms. Maintaining your fractions now. So in this case, two times two is four, and three times one is three. So we end up with four thirds, or four over three. Is that completed? No, it isn't. What do we do when we have, in this case, what we call an improper fraction? Remember from previous lessons as well, an improper fraction is when the top or the numerator is larger than the denominator. What do you do when you have a mix? Sorry, an improper fraction. You want to simplify it. How do you simplify it? You find out how much of the denominator can you get out of the out of the, out of the numerator. Sorry. Okay, so how many groups of threes can I get from four? Good job, one. That one is our whole number. Do we have any remainders? What do you do when you have a remainder? You want to put it over the denominator. Okay, so our answer here is one, the whole number, and one third. Very good. I want you to work out the problem that I have on the screen. And kindly remember the rules when dividing fraction. Remember the rules. You want to leave, you want to change, and you want to flip or find the reciprocal. So you want to leave, change, and find the reciprocal or flip. So you're gonna leave the first part of that fraction. You're gonna change the sign to multiply, good. Then you want to flip the second part of the fraction or again, find the reciprocal. Ready? Leave two over 11, change the division sign to multiplication, flip one fifth, that becomes, good job, five over one. What do you do when you reach this point? Again, you want to apply the knowledge or your knowledge rather of multiplication. So when you multiply in fractions, what do you do? Again, you want to keep your, sorry, you want to multiply your numerators together. Then you want to multiply your denominators together. In this case, we have two times five as our numerators being multiplied, which will give us 10. Then we have our bottoms, our denominators that we must multiply. In this case, 11 times one is 11. Good job. So we end up with 10 over 11. That's a proper fraction. So we can move on. I have now a problem whereby you have 
mixed fractions, okay? And again, I want you to bring in prior knowledge from previous lessons. Also what I would have said earlier in this lesson. When you have mixed fractions, what do you do with them? Good job. You want to change the mixed fractions to improper fractions. And remember how that is done. You want to multiply your whole numbers by your denominators and add your numerators. Okay, so give you a second to look at it. Okay, so we have, and I want you to focus on the numbers because the words on the right hand side of the screens, they're just the steps. So don't focus on that too much right now. Focus on the numbers. So we have one and four over nine being divided by two and three over five. One times nine is nine, add four is 13. And remember, you want to keep the denominator for that part of the fraction, or that part, in this case, the mixed fraction. So we end up with 13 over nine, okay? Next, you have the two thirds, sorry, the two and three fifths. What do you do with it? Again, you want to change the mixed fraction to improper fraction. Again, that's done by multiplying the whole number. In this case, it's two by the, good job, by the denominator. In this case, it's five. So two, times five is 10, add three, it's good job, 13. And we keep the denominator for that part of the fraction. In this case, it's five. Okay, once you would have, re uh oh, jump in the gun, let's go back. Okay, so now again, focus on the left-hand side of your screen. 13 over nine, you're being asked to divide that by 13 over five. Follow the rules of dividing fractions. You leave or you keep the first part of the fraction. In this case, 10 over nine. You want to change the sign division to multiplication. Then you want to flip the second part of that fraction or find its reciprocal. Okay. Here we have a problem that involves mixed fractions. If you notice on your slide, we have one and four over nine, and you're being asked to divide that by two and three fifths. Remember what I said in previous lessons, whenever you have mixed fractions, you want to change the mixed fractions to improper fractions before you work on the, on the problem. And how, do, how is that done? It's done by multiplying the whole number by the denominators and adding the numerators. In this case, we have one as our whole number in the first instance. So one multiplied by nine, add four, we get 13. Also recall what you're gonna do with the denominator for that part of the fraction. 
Yes, good job. You're gonna keep the denominator. So 13 over nine is the first part of my fraction now. Let's look at the second part of the fraction. Sorry, the mix, we have a mixed number. Two and three fifths. How do you change that mixed fraction to an improper fraction? Yes, you want to multiply the whole number by the denominator and add the numerator. Good job. So two times five, add three, is 13. And how do I know what my denominator for this part of the fraction is going to be? By looking at the denominator for the mixed fraction. Okay, so again, you want to keep the same denominator for that part of the fraction. Now we have 13 over nine divided by 13 over five. At this point, I want you to follow and, and implement or apply rather your, your knowledge of dividing fractions. You want to leave, change, flip. Again, what am I leaving or what am I keeping? I'm keeping the first part of the fraction. In this case, it's 13 over nine. So we get to keep that. Next, I'm gonna change something. What do I change? I'm gonna change my sign, my division sign. What does it come? What does it become? It is changed into multiplication. So the division sign becomes multiplication. What do you do with the second part of the fraction? Again, you want to flip it or find its reciprocal and recall what the reciprocal means. Finding the reciprocal is simply switching places with the denominators and the numerator, okay? In this case, we have 13 over five. When we find the reciprocal of 13 over five, that becomes good, five over 13. Once you would have reached this part of the, of the problem, you want to, you want to use your, your prior knowledge on multiplying fractions, okay? So here we have 13 over nine times five over 13. Again, when multiplying fractions, what did we do? Good job. We multiplied our tops together, then we multiplied our bottoms together, okay? So 13 times five gives us 65. Nine times 13 is 117. Again, you want to ask yourself, is that completed? Is my problem completed? No, it's not because I see whereby I can simplify that further. Okay, so we have 65 over 117. Okay, you find a number that goes equally into both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, that number will be 13. Okay, so 13 goes into 65, how many times? Five times. 13 also goes into 117 nine times, okay? Again, you want to look at your fraction. Are we done? Yes, we are. Moving right along. We have recapped how to multiply fractions. We learn how to find the reciprocal. Again, the reciprocal simply switching places with the denominators. We have learned to divide fractions using the leave, change, flip rule, if you recall. Good job. I hope and trust that everyone is still with me at this point. I want you to try the three questions that I have on the screen. So I'm gonna try them with you 
and I'm going to give you some time to work on them. And remember, when you hear the music, you have one minute left. So let's go. Okay, let's see what we have here. Number one, we have one over four divided by two fifths. Secondly, six sevenths divided by three over four or three fourths. And we have a mixed fraction or mixed fraction. One half, one and one half, sorry, divided by two and five sixths. Okay. So let's investigate some of the answers. And of course, as usual, you can compare your answers with mine and see where you would have made a mistake. First, we have one fourth divided by two fifths. Remember the rules of division or dividing multiples. Sorry, dividing fractions rather. It's one, in this case, one times five over, sorry, one fourth multiplied by five fifths. How did we get that? How did you get one fourth times five fifths? One fourth, we keep the first part of the fraction, okay? Follow with me. You're gonna change the sign from division to multiplication. 
And for the two-fifths, you're going to find the reciprocal. Okay? So it becomes 5 over 2. Then you want to apply your knowledge of multiplying fraction. In this case, 1 times 5 is 5, and 4 times 2 is 8. Secondly, we have 6 over 7 divided by 3 fourths. Again, you want to apply the rules of dividing fractions. You want to keep the first part of the fraction. You want to change the division sign to multiplication. Then you want to find the reciprocal of the second part of the fraction. Then you apply your rules, okay, or the rules rather, of multiplying fractions. Six times four, 24. And seven threes is 21. So we end up with 24 over 21. Okay, I have a little typo on the screen. Nonetheless, 24 over 21. Okay, what do you do with that? Okay, that can be simplified because it's a improper fraction. Okay, how many groups of 21 can I get out of 24? One group and a remainder three. What do you do with the remainder three? You want to put it over the denominator. Okay, good job. Pardon my typo. Moving on to the next, the next problem. We have one and one half divide two and five six. Okay, what do you do in this case? You want to change the mixed fraction to an improper fraction. One times two is two. Add one is three. Follow on the next line. One times two is two. Add one is three over. We keep the denominator. Okay, that's being divided by two times six is 12. Add five. We have 17 over six. Again, we keep the denominator. So now we have three over two. We change our division signs to multiplication, sign to multiplication times, we find the reciprocal of the last part of the fraction. In this case, 17 over six becomes six over 17. Good. Then you want to apply the rules of multiplying fractions. So we have, Three times six being 18, two times 17, 34. Ask yourself, am I done here? Can that be simplified? Yes, it can be. Okay, so again, you want to find a number that divides equally into both numerators and denominator. In this case, it's two. Two can go into 18 nine times, and two can go into 34 17 times. Okay, that wraps up our lesson for today. And again, any questions or concerns you may have concerning the lesson, you can put those in the Q&A chat and a responder will be there to answer you. Also, you can get worksheets and past papers on our website. See you next time. Hello everyone, I'm so excited to see you. Welcome to another sixth grade math drill with Miss Antonia Bain. Let's get started. Good news everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing something awesome. We'll be talking about the parts of a division equation. There are one, two, three main parts to a division equation. They are the divisor, the dividend, and the quotient. The divisor 
is the number you are dividing by. The dividend is the number being divided. And the quotient is the result obtained. In the equation, 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. 30 is your dividend, 5 is your divisor, and 6 is your quotient. In the equation, 99 divided by 11 is equal to 9. 99 is your dividend, 11 is your divisor, and 9 is your quotient. Now, it's your turn. In the example, 144 divided by 4 is equal to 36, what is the quotient? If you said 36, you are correct. Let's look at another example. 600 divided by 15 is equal to 40. What is the divisor? If you said 15, you are correct. Awesome job, guys. Now it's time to put on our thinking cap, guys. In the equation, 100 divided by A is equal to 5. A is a variable that represents our divisor. So what, then, is our possible divisor? If you said 20, you are correct. Good job, guys. Let's look at this example. 300 divided by 3 is equal to F. F is a variable that represents our quotient. So what is the possible quotient? If you said 100, you are correct. Let's recap now, guys. Let's not forget this week's keywords and their definitions. This math drill was created by Miss Antonia Bain from TG Global. and it's time for your word of the week. Defeated. Defeated means beaten, overcome, or to lose. The defeated team was sad at the end of the game. How would you act if you were defeated? Would you be excited or would you be disappointed? Remember, defeated means beaten, overcome, or to lose. You would be disappointed if you were defeated. Defeated. I'd love to see you using this week's word. Please share your videos on our Flipgrid using the link below or scan this QR code. Welcome to another quick tech tip. I will be showing you two ways to add images to your text in PowerPoint. For the first method, you want to start with a nice thick text, and then you insert your image that you wish to use. Place the image behind the text and measure it up really good. Then select both the text and the image, go to Format, Merge Shape, and then intersect. Boom, there you have it. What you should know though, is that the text is no longer editable. You cannot change the text for anything. The second way I'm going to show you is of course using Word Art. I'm gonna select the design that I like, and then I am going to insert my text. Next, what I will do is change the text fill to a picture fill, and I will choose a picture from my computer, and then put the name in fly, and it's filled. The good thing about Word Art is now it is also editable, so you can change the text, change the font, and see what it looks like in these various font sizes. 